This is part two of what is a faith crisis. And today I'm gonna to support those of you that identify with having a faith crisis. So stick around and we're gonna get you some support and tools. As difficult as pain is, pain is our greatest motivator for change. So even though I would never wish pain on anybody, we can look at it from a different perspective and see that it is calling us to something new, something different. And in if you saw episode one, I think it's calling you to become more of yourself, to look at where you have come thus far in your life and to see what's working and see what needs to change. And it's a beautiful experience. So don't let it discourage you. In fact, I put, I'm gonna put a link in the <clears throat> description for a music video that I think is, is so helpful. And it kind of describes how it can feel to go through a faith crisis. So I have just a few tips today to help you navigate through this difficult time. Um, as always, always go within and up to find your own answers, but these are some things that I think would be helpful. Number one, take a deep breath. Uh, this part of you is coming up and presenting for a good reason, and if you will hold on and trust and move through the other side, you will be better for it. But take a breath and realize that you will not be the same person on the other side of that of this and that is okay but also practice the self-care so an important part is you we've got to bring two things into balance we've got to bring in our self-care and we've got to we've got to trust and build our relationships and those that are close to me have said that they think that if anything else fails lean toward the relationship and default to the relationship. And, and if you have to make a choice, always put the relationship first, but not at the expense of self-care. So we've got to find this balance of self-care and it's a practice that which means we're not always gonna get it right and we're not always gonna do it right, but the self practice of self-care so that we can stay in a positive state. Because if we start to lose um, ourselves in a physically or emotionally, mentally, we are going to suffer spiritually and so are those that are around us. Um, there will be times when self-care will feel unnatural or building a relationship will feel contrary to what you want to do. So you need to find that um, balance in there, but stick with it and you will see that uh, as you practice and learn this balance, that's kind of what the energy is teaching you to do is to bring yourself as part of the whole. So when those things, at the end of this, there will be so much more balance in your life with yourself and with your relationships and with your faith that you will be a better person for it. Step two is the hardest part and it's to not compare. Sometimes when we're feeling out of control, we kind of look at other people to see how to get back into control. That's not always the best um, advice. So it's been the norm for all of us to think alike and do alike, and so we do look at someone else to see how that's gonna work. But the very point of this energy is for us to bring a new us, a new individual us to the whole. So don't look to somebody else's individualism. You've got to look within yourself and not compare. We don't all have to act the same. Um, and to me, as we individualize our faith or our offering that we feel um, supports us, I think that's more beautiful. I think we do things more deliberately and with intention as we really file through some of the things that maybe bother us and see what, what our true... Um, devotion is and it can be a beautiful thing when it comes from a um, space that's all yours and I, I think that offering would be received so much better because you've deliberately and 
willingly done it. The other thing is that sometimes for you that are suffering, we need to also look at other people's choices and see their choices as beautifully representing their expression of how they want to do. And if it's not the way that you do it, don't compare them to someone else or to yourself or whatever. Realize that they are doing the same as you, you are. They are um, expressing in a way that serves them. And it might not be your way of doing it, but, th but that's okay. And if we can kind of let that go, a lot of the pain and suffering kind of can sub subside. Your role as the person going through this faith crisis is not to bring others with you along with you. It, they might not have the same path that you are on and that's okay. They're having their individual experience. So it's not your job to tell them what you are going through. And, and I just want to say this takes a, a, a really good inside um, connection because when, with that self-care, you might need to talk to somebody, but don't do it at the detriment of the relationship. But we, we don't need to go into details about um, necessarily what we're suffering with because we get lost in the weeds when we go off in those things because really at the bottom of this we're, we're figuring out what works for us and it's easy to get lost if we go into the what's and why's so just be cautious about that I wouldn't say never do it but just be cautious as you're talking to loved ones because they are not having the same experience of you is as you and when we kind of bring in the conflict of it that's when we start to have real struggles in our relationships and that's where most of the pain comes in a faith crisis. The third um, tip is to pay attention to your inner world. So our inner world is an expression of our outer world and we have not been well at this, done well at this as a human species but our sensations in our bodies give us clues and indications about the choices that we're making and the experiences that we're having. And it's really important to get clear about what those sensations are feeling. So when we're in a faith crisis, let's say sometimes we might have fear that shows up and we need to do some inner work to decide if that fear is fear of something new and trying something new or if that fear is a warning like that's not for me and that gets really muddled in a faith crisis we sometimes move from what we used to think was the right way all the way to the other end of the spectrum thinking that's the fix and it takes a long time to bring it back into balance so one of the ways we can prevent that is to go inside and really get familiar with the sensations of the body and what they mean to you and what the messages that they are trying to give to you are. And it's all too often in a faith crisis that we desire numbing because it's painful. And so we kind of use things that will go to the things that are the opposite of what we were taught in order to numb. But like, and, and you know, and I, I honor the fact that there's that pain, but sometimes we, we can't numb, like Renee Brown says, we cannot numb just part of who we are. So we've got to be aware of our emotions and aware of what's happening and, and not numb those emotions as best that we can. Find support groups or things that you can do to help you work through your emotions. I think there's a lot of progress that can, we, that can be made if we are unafraid of this change that is happening. I think that causes a lot of discomfort. The fourth tip is to resist the urge to follow. So I talked about in the previous episode about the change and the shift in energy. And the shift, the energy is no longer a leader follower type energy. It's, it's changed a little bit. We still have bosses, we still have leaders, but we, we, there is an exchange back and forth that is different than it was before. It's not 100% changed. We're, it, we still have leaders and followers, but there is a flow back and forth that was not there before, and, and that's a good thing. So we're able to take in information, see how it works for us, and then creatively express it. And I think that happens in our work and in our fun. It's happening all over the place. We're, we're kind of um, trying out new things and growing in different ways, and, and that's good. But the urge to follow is really strong. So we might... Um, 
look to someone else to tell us what to do. We might follow um, someone that we admire and respect that has a lot of followers and trust that they have your answers and they can support you in their way, but it's still important to remain that individual, to take in the information, process it and make it your own and express it uh, your own. And, and so caution, caution number, this is a big caution, to do not just change from one follower, be, from follow one person and change and become a follower of another person. That, that is not using the energy in the way that it's presenting itself. <music> The fifth and final tip I have for you is to always find the balance. When it comes to anything, if you can sit with the emotion or the feeling or the thought for a minute, think about the opposite and try and find a balance in between. During this a faith crisis, it's called a crisis because it's, it's in chaos. And so if we can just move a little slower um, and spend the time that we need to calm ourselves, then we can uh, find the balance into this new experience that we're having and balance it with the old experience that we're having. So um, many prayers and blessings to you that are struggling with a faith crisis. Um, I support you and I hope that you can use these tips to help um, the experience become ease, recognize that it's not something that you did and that this is a great opportunity for you. Next time, I'm going to talk to those of you that have someone that you're supporting that has a faith crisis. So if you are having a faith crisis, share this with your loved one and make sure that they tune in next time and subscribe so that you for sure don't miss it.